Hey, everybody, and welcome to the introduction to module two. Um, in module one, you explore the meanings and functions of art in your community and throughout the world. In module two, you'll examine the visual elements of design. So the visual elements are the fundamental components that make up the language, that nonverbal language that visual artists use to communicate. As an art viewer, you'll use that vocabulary associated with the visual elements of design to analyze and describe examples of visual art. So after you complete the reading for module two, you'll also have the opportunity to explore art on your own through a project that's going to introduce you to the wonderful visual resource that is the museum website for the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. The Met Museum is in Central Park. It is the largest museum in North America. In 2022, it was visited, visited by over 3 million people, making it one of the top five most visited universe, um, museums on the planet, right? Um, there's one story that, if you'll bear with me, I just want to share with you, but um, I studied with a woman who, a painter, who um, told me a story about her job job that she did when she was in school studying painting. Uh, so she went to the Art Students League in New York, studying painting by day and by night, she worked as a guard in the Met Museum. Um, so a museum guard is somebody who just walks the hallways or stands next to a work of art to make sure that nobody gets too close or touches the work or that the works aren't at, in, at, in any risk in any way. So the bonus of working at night is that you're only in the museum with other guards, which means that she could stand in front of her favorite painting and spend as much time as the job allowed, um, which was probably considerable with that work. So kind of communing with the artwork, which I think is just one of the best jobs you could have if you were a student artist. Um, so in, in any case, you're going to be um, sort of having a chance to really engage with the website, which is just full of examples of all the many different kinds of work that they have there. Um, and so the project is going to be introduced to you in module two. You want to do the reading first. Um, engage with the lecture first, too, I think would also be best. Um, there is an instruction sheet and a rubric for that assignment on in module two. So you can see uh, an example and a template there for you to just work with. So that makes it a little bit easier. Uh, but basically, um, in the second half of today, uh, module two, we're going to be talking about those elements of design. And the final project that you'll do in this module is about finding your own examples of works that demonstrate those elements. So it's really an opportunity to really begin to pick and choose based on your own taste. You know, what is it that you are interested in? You can use this assignment as an opportunity to, to look outside of the textbook um, and in a way trust your own, trust what you gravitate towards as a starting point for your own, developing your own art sensibility. Okay, and so as you do this, as you complete the reading and explore the art on your own, I want you to remember that artworks can express similar meanings in different ways. Okay? Um, I want you to consider the differences between representational, abstract, and non-representational art. And so we're going to discuss those things a little bit further as we get into the module together. And with those things in mind, our objectives for this module are to, by the end of the lesson, be able to, by using visual examples, be able to define and discuss the elements of design, those ingredients of art making. So for example, right now we're looking at an example of a, an abstraction or an abstract painting um, that works with shape and color and contrast in certain ways that make it exciting or engaging. I thought this was a good example to kind of get us excited about the stuff we're gonna to cover together. Um, so we're going to be building a language to be able to talk more in depth about what the elements are that this artist is using. And then also to, um, to be able to understand where it stands in the spectrum of abstract art. So that's our second, second goal this time around is to be able to identify and discuss the differences between representational, abstract, and non-representational art. We also wanna be able to explain the difference between form and content of visual examples, form and content of visual examples. 
Okay, so looking forward to getting started on that with y'all. Before we do, though, I hope you will kind of bear with me for a little bit of a public service announcement, I guess. Um, but I really do hope that this class will get you uh, curious about the way that art surrounds you in your daily life. Um, I think sometimes we tend to just immediately associate art, quote unquote, with painting maybe, and we think about paintings being in museums maybe, but the opposite is really true. There's so much more than that, even as we saw in module one. So, you know, we can talk about, we can talk about paintings, we can talk about the mural that we're seeing in this image here, right? So this is a mural, um, it's the Rock Island Greenway mural. It's under the I-20 in Ruston. I don't know if any of you have seen it. It's under the I-20 overpass there, pretty close to where I am now giving um, this lecture, making this recording for you. So this is a mural that was designed and painted by Louisiana Tech students. Students from the University School of Design who were graphic design majors and studio majors participated in painting this mural and invited members of the public to join them and help and paint a few colors, um, as well as the mayor of the city too. So it's a wonderful way for our students to sort of have a connection and a relationship to, to art and the way that it functions within a community. It's a real world experience as well. So it's pretty wonderful, but there are more opportunities too. So if, if you want to see work in museums and galleries, then look at the museums that are happening in Dallas, Houston, Little Rock, and Fayetteville. Those are some of the ones that we take our students to on field trips because they're the closest um, and they're really good. So within a four hour drive away, if you can't make that drive for whatever reasons, then there are places within this community in North Louisiana that you can visit. There are several galleries in Treeport, in Bossier, in Bruston, in uh, Monroe and West Monroe, as well as other communities um, all along that sort of North Louisiana geography, right? So um, some of the ones in Ruston that you might take a look at if you're in town are Creative Exchange, which is both an art store and an exhibition space in downtown Ruston, as well as Ruston Artisans in downtown Ruston and the Fringe Gallery, which is a collective of local artists from uh, who, are, who are located and working in Ruston currently. The Louisiana Tech School of Design Art Galleries have shows several times, of several times a year. Um, we have art receptions that are open to the public and they're free and they're not just for students, the public and family and friends can come anytime. So those are usually announced on the tech events page. Um, if you can't come for the for the opening event, then please come and just visit the galleries during the day. We're open Monday through Friday from 9 to 4.30. Um, another great opportunity is the Monroe Art Crawl. And that's free and open to everybody. And so an art crawl, if you haven't been to one, an art crawl or an art walk, it's sometimes called, um, is a community event where galleries open their doors and serve refreshments and they all tend to be located within a defined area. Sometimes they happen in downtown Ruston. This one happens in the art district, arts district in downtown Monroe. So you can go during a period of time in the evenings in the fall or late summer. It's really nice. Um, you can go and visit all the different art galleries where you'll see work of all kinds made by artists of all different, all different types and levels. So it's a great community experience. There's usually music sometimes and food as well. Um, so one way to find out about the art events in your area is to sign up for the mailing list, emailing list, or visit the social media pages for your regional arts councils. And again, I'm just gonna name the some of the major ones that are in North Louisiana. So in the Ruston and Monroe area, we have the Northeast Louisiana Arts Council, NELAC.org is their website. In Shreveport, there is the is SHRAC, the Shreveport Regional Arts Council, SHRAC.org. So these are um, nonprofit organizations that facilitate connections between the community and the art opportunities um, available in your area. So I believe there's also one in Homer there. That, so it's even just knowing that a regional arts council, a nonprofit, is, is performing this kind of a function in the world, you can start to research what's in your area. And then once you get to their website, it's a good way to keep up with events that are happening. That might be art openings, it might be connecting um, clients with artists, it might be 
film, music related as well. Some of them do all of those things, right? It could also be education opportunities. So if you wanted to take a workshop, for example, that's open to the public, sometimes the arts councils will offer those as well as artist talks and additional things. So it's a good thing to know about. And I'm hoping that um, what we're doing together over the course of this term will get you excited about art and um, interested in connecting with what's available in your area, okay? So that's it for the introduction, y'all. We're going to take a pause here, and then I will see you again very shortly for the beginning of Module 2. Looking forward to it.